Hello everyone. Hope you're having a great Monday, uh, start of a new week. Uh, I just want to begin by saying we had a great day yesterday. Uh, you know, just a, a wonderful time together as we remembered and celebrated and honored uh, those that uh, have passed away the last year and a half or so. And uh, it was just a really good day, able to have a, a dinner and uh, d different things. It was just a, a, a just a wonderful time. And I'm so thankful. I'm thankful for each one that uh, brought tributes. Uh, I thought it was really special and, and uh, you know, just, just a good service. Well, today we're going to dive deeper into the uh, book of Romans. Uh, again, deeper into scripture from the YouVersion Bible app, Bible.com. Uh, again, you, you really, they ask you to invite you to read it through four different times. Uh, and, and that's, I think, especially helpful here in this part of Romans because there's, there's so much deep stuff here. Uh, you have to chew on it a little bit. You have to uh, work, work through it in your mind, in your heart for it to sink deep in and really to, to understand it. Uh, let the Holy Spirit guide you in that. And uh, uh, like I said today's is, is no different than what we've been kind of covering. What, what Paul's going to do here is sort of a Another analogy, another uh, way of explaining what happens when we're saved, uh, when we come to Christ, and how we, you know, we're changed, and and how we we need to to live in relationship to sin. And uh, it, it's, it's kind of interesting because he he does this, and he, he seems to be doing it over and over and over again, uh, trying to explain it in all these different kinds of ways, little subtle differences. Uh, each time and, and sort of uses some different analogies like we talked about Abraham and his relationship to the law and circumcision and all those kinds of things and he the passage we're going to look at today in, in Romans chapter 7 he he uh, uh, does that again essentially uh, and and so let's let's dig into this uh, we're, we're only a few verses today six verses of um, Romans chapter 7 uh, and, and like I said, it's it's an important passage. I, I think one of the things that he's getting across here, he's he's using, uh, partially using the idea of marriage here, to to talk about our relationship to the law and to to sin, and it's it's kind of an interesting analogy because it's it's kind of different, and you might not notice it uh, if you just kind of quickly read through it. You kind of have to have to again kind of digest it a little bit to to even understand what he's what he's saying here but but let's dig in verse one it says do you not know brothers and sisters for i am speaking to those who know who know the law uh, so now he's speaking to those that are uh, you know been living in the law living you know jewish uh law uh you know the old testament that kind of thing he says that the law has authority over someone only as long as that person lives so, so if you're a Jew, if you're following the law, if you're keeping the law, trying to keep the law to for salvation or whatever, uh, you know that law has a hold on you. It's over you. It has, uh, uh, you know, your your uh, uh, you you need to live according to that law, uh, that kind of thing. And and it's it's true as long as you live. And and so. You know, I, I think this is, you know, this authority over you, it, it's, it's, it's your own life. I think one of the things he's trying to get at here is you can't just kind of, well, there's no wishy-washiness here. You, you're either all in or you're, you're out. And, and uh, so often we try to live our, our Christian faith that way sometimes where we, well, we, you know, we put a toe in the water to see, see how it is. And maybe we pull out of it or, or maybe we go a little deeper in or, or whatever, we're hesitant to, to go full in. And, and he says, you really can't do that. And, and you, you're, you're either all in or not. And, and so he's saying, the law has authority over someone only as long as that person lives. It's, it's, for, it's for your life that, you, you know, that it is over you. And then in verse 2, here's his example. Uh, and he's going to talk about marriage here. He says, for example, by law, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive. Uh, by law, you're you know you're you're married uh, under the the Old Testament law. Not not you know we're not talking about government or anything here. We're talking about uh, in the eyes of God, so to speak. Uh, by law, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive. 
Now, again, he's, he's tying this in with the idea that, that the law has authority over someone as long as they're, as they're alive. So he's just, for example, by law, a woman, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he's alive. But if her husband dies, she's released in the law that binds her to him. So when, when a, you know, a spouse dies, that person is no longer bound to that, to the other spouse because they, you know, they're, because of the death, there's a, there's a break there. And so the, the law is is no more in charge like i said i know he's he's it's kind of a deep thing he's doing here but but he's going to apply that to 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 our lives in relationship to the law and and really to sin so verse three says so then if she has sexual relations with another man while her husband is still alive she is called an adulteress uh, why because she's still under that law that uh you know she, when she was married when she was united to to her to her husband that 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 was binding and and she's under that that law so if she has sexual relations with another man while her husband is still alive she's called an adulteress but if her husband died and, and again paul is making he he's he's going to he wants to teach us something about about our relationship with sin and and the law and god and those things uh, I, i'm not sure i mean he's making a statement here about uh, about sexual relations but i that's not the main point that he's He's trying to make here. So, uh, so she has a sexual relations with another man while her husband's still alive. She's called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is released from that law, is not an adulteress if she re if she marries another man. So if she gets married again because she's not under the previous law. She's she's uh, she's free to marry marry again. Okay. So so then he says, so my brothers and sisters, you also died to the law through the body of Christ. Uh, so, so, so again, this is verse four. He, he says, you also died to the law through the body of Christ. So you are no longer under that law. It's no longer, you know, we talked about, about baptism. You go, go down, uh, into the water, you die to yourself, you die to sin, you come back out of the water to new life. And, and he, he's been talking about that several different times, several different ways. Here. So, so here in verse four, so my brothers and sisters, you also died to the law through the body of Christ because of what Christ did for, for you, for us, uh, in saving us and dying in our place. And, and we can identify with that. Remember, we talked about that over several days there. You know, there's several places that he's kind of making reference. That's his whole point here. You died to the law through the body of Christ. God, uh, through Jesus, uh, our salvation, through God's grace, we put our faith in, in what Christ did for us. Uh, we died to the law through the body of Christ. So we, we are no longer under that law. And again, he's, he's, he's talking about in the way, you know, going back, he just talked about marriage and, and when, when, you know, the spouse dies, that, that law is, is broken. It's no longer has hold over, over the person that's married. And so, so here he's applying this to that, or, or actually he's applying that to this. But uh, anyway, because this is the bigger point that he's wanting to make. You also died to the law through the body of Christ. So you are no longer under that, that law. He said that you might belong to another. And here's, here's his ultimate point that he's trying to make for us and, and trying to help us understand is that you might belong to another, to him who raised who is raised from the dead in order that we might bear fruit for God. Uh, in other words, we're, we're no longer under the law. We belong to Jesus uh, because of what Jesus has done for us through the body of, of Christ, because he died for us and died in our place. We, we now belong to him. We died to that old way of living. We died to our sin. We died to, to, uh, you know, that, that, uh, you know, to the law or whatever. And, and now we, we are united with Christ. And, and, and this is a big, a big theme throughout, uh, the New Testament and through Paul's writings and, and, and sort of the idea of our being married to Christ. And, uh, often people talk about the, you know, the, the Jesus is going to come back someday for his bride. We, we, the church is the bride of Christ. And, and all of this, and there's there's references. This is this is kind of where uh, we see see some of that in in this, in the, in that we are we are no longer 
married to the law, we're now married to, to Jesus. We're married to, to the Lord. And, and uh, so, so we, we died to the law. We went down in the water in death. We came back up in, in life. And it's just another way of saying this. You died to the law, to the law through the body of Christ that you might come back to life in him. Uh, you might belong to, to him, belong to another, uh, to him who was raised from the dead, to Jesus, in order that we might bear fruit for God. We, 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 we live for God. And, and you know, we're, we're seeing that as in, in Romans 12 and in, in the, you know, the sermon series we've been doing is, is that, you know, we've, we've been saved to, to live this transformed life uh, that, God has, that God has for us. Uh, so let's go on verse five. He says, "For for when you were in the realm of of the flesh." Now I, I have a, a note here. It says, "In context like this, the Greek word for for flesh re refers to the sinful state of of human beings, uh, often presented as a power in opposition to the spirit." So, so in other words, for when you were in the realm of the flesh, when you were living in sin, when you were, uh, you know, not not forgiven before you came to to Christ. Uh, for when you were in the realm of the flesh, the sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in us. And another place Paul talks about how the law sort of tells us what what we should do and shouldn't do, and it it causes us to, to be aware of things that are sin. And there's the, the idea kind of is because we become aware of them, we're sort of drawn to them. And we want to do those things, you know, in a way that uh, uh, we we ought not do. And uh, and so he he's saying when when you were in the realm of the flesh before you came to Christ, the sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in us, so that we bore fruit for death. Uh, so so in sin leads to sin, sin leads to more sin and more sin and more sin. And so so as we we, uh, you know, sort of living in sin and, you know, and, and, and we, we are, we're drawn to more sin and we become more, uh, it kind of goes back to what he said about, you know, we talked about holiness a few days ago about how we're, we're dead to sin and, and, and the power of sin in our life is, is taken away by what Jesus does for us. And so, so here he's saying, you know, that for when we were in the realm of the flesh, when we were living in sin, the sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in us so that we bore fruit for death. Uh, the wages of sin is death, right? So, uh, you know, we are, we, the more we sin, the more, you know, we deserve that, that death. Uh, you know, we deserve to die for, for our, our sins. Well, then verse six, it says, but now by dying to what bound, once bound us by dying to, to our sin, to the sin, uh, we have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the spirit and not in the old way of the written code. So, so now we're, we don't have to live that way anymore. We don't have to live according to uh, those sinful passions uh, you know, at, at, at work in us, aroused by the law that were at work in us uh, so that we bore fruit that led to death. But now, by dying to what, what once bound us, by dying to the law, by dying to our sins, uh, you know, we come back to life. We are released from the law so that we serve in the way uh, of the Spirit. Just in the way, and again, his, his, you go back to what he was talking about in the beginning, it's, it's like when a a spouse dies that that connection is broken in the sense of of the law in the sense of in god's eyes you know that person the other spouse that's still living is is free to go on and and marry someone else but but here we, we that 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 relationship with sin is is broken that power that sin has over us is broken and now we can live for life. We can live and bear fruit, good fruit, uh, dying to what once bound us. We have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code. We serve the Lord. We follow the Lord. We love the Lord. We are, we are no longer bound to our sins. We're bound to, to Him. Uh, it, it's really a beautiful picture, and, and like I said, I know it's kind of a complicated thing when you just kind of read through it and go through it kind of quickly or whatever. 
uh, it's the reason it's important to sort of read it a few times and digest it. Uh, you, you really, there's there's quite a bit of good depth there that, that it's it's really a message that that we need to grasp. I mean, I, I've said all along, one of the important parts of this early part of Romans is to, to and we're, we're getting further into it now in chapter 7, but but one of the beautiful things about it is it's we understand more and more about God's grace, about what God's done for us. Uh, the more we'll be, I don't know what the word for it, drawn to serve him, will be, uh, I guess, the, we'll find joy in serving him because we know what Jesus has done for us, the amazing, amazing grace. Uh, you know, I once was a wretch, but now I'm found, and, and you know, lost and, and found, and, and um, you know, it's, it's, it's really an amazing thing, a beautiful thing that God has done for us through his grace. Well, let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this word uh, that we're, you know, just this whole book of Romans, but especially this passage today. It's a beautiful thing. And help us to, to recognize this is what happens when we give our heart to you, our, our life to you, where we, uh, we recognize, you know, how amazing your grace is, Lord. Uh, help us to, to live in that. And we don't have to live bound to sin and, and the power of sin is is broken uh, just how a you know in the marriage when a spouse passes away that law that that bound them together and no and you know that we we thank you that the that law is broken we we can hold on to the spirit and live by the spirit live in the joy of, of serving you and doing things for you and doing the right things, the things that uh, bring us life uh, instead of the things that, uh, that bring us death. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. Uh, Lord, continue to be with those that need a touch from you. Uh, be with those that are sick, those that are hurting, those that are struggling in one way or another, Lord. Give them strength. Help them today uh, to know you are present with them. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you for a good day yesterday, Lord. We had a wonderful service and uh, so many here. And Lord, uh, it was just a good time of comfort in, in time of grief and, and sort of recognizing that you are always faithful. Uh, you've been faithful in the past. You're faithful in the present. You're going to be faithful in the future. And, and Lord, we just praise you for, for that. We can put our hand in yours and, and know you are with us. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for uh, watching today. We'll have another devotional uh, tomorrow. Actually, I'm, I'm going to go up to the campground and help for a few days up there. Uh, but I'll still be doing these devotionals, but they'll be, uh, be somewhere there on the campground uh, in Clay City. But uh, uh, you have a great rest of the day, and we will uh, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Uh,